Hi, this is Chris from Packet Pioneer, and this video is about the difference between an MTU and an MSS. This is a question that comes in from time to time, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now we want to start off talking about with MTUs, there's different types of MTUs depending on the OSI model layer that we're talking about. So usually when we mean MTU, what we're referring to is the Ethernet MTU. So that's the Ethernet Maximum Transmission Unit. Now this is something that's set on switches and routers along an Ethernet path when we have an Ethernet interface. And this basically specifies how large will the encapsulated data inside the Ethernet frame be. What's my largest maximum amount of data that will be transmitted on that connection B? Now, keep in mind that this is set per interface. So it's not something that's negotiated between routers or something that uh, uh, is exchanged between two interfaces in most cases. It's something that's set locally. So one interface doesn't know what the other interface's MTU is. That's just a simple setting inside that interface saying this is the largest one that I will send. Now in some cases we want to adjust that MTU. Now take for example if we're in an environment that's using jumbo frames. You notice on the router on the left, its MTU toward the other router is set to 9000 bytes. So that means that this is an interface that could support much larger frame sizes and that would be acceptable. However in this case, we can see that the other router is set differently. Now this is an MTU mismatch. Now just because I have an MTU of 9000 along this path also does not mean that the two endpoints will absolutely make use of it. I need to make sure that I'm having a sending station or a sending server. Usually this is a data, uh, a data center thing, so the servers that are actually sending those packets also need to be able to make use of a much larger MTU. So that was talking about Ethernet. Let's go ahead and talk about an IP MTU. Now on an interface, we can also configure the maximum transmission unit of an IP packet. Now from time to time, this might be adjusted depending on the type of protocols that we have running. Now between these two routers, I have a GRE tunnel. So that means that the data that's coming in needs to have additional data appended to it and then transmitted out on the wire. So from time to time, we might adjust that down so that that GRE information can be appended without exceeding the Ethernet MTU that's also set on that interface. So there we quickly have it with MTU. It's, it's a setting that specifies the maximum transmission unit for Ethernet, typically is what we're talking about. Now, what's the difference between MTU and MSS? Well, maximum segment size is a value that is set at the TCP level, so that's up at layer four. So typically when two stations connect with one another, they do that three-way handshake, what they do is they can exchange the um, maximum amount of data that they can receive. So this end user can say to that server, hey, I only want to see 1460 byte packets encapsulated, not counting the TCP, IP, or Ethernet uh, header overhead. So if that's the value, for example, which is a common one, you're often going to see that with uh, TCP packets. You'll, a lot of times you'll see 1460. And the reason is once we add a 20 byte TCP header and then a 20 byte IP header, that brings us up to a total packet size of 1500. So a lot of times that's why you'll see that TCP uh, MSS size be 1460. Now this is where the MSS can also be adjusted by the network itself. So a TCP SYN from the client to the server could hit that first router and that router can change the MSS setting from 1460 down to 1432 and then the same in the opposite direction. Now why would we want to do that? Well again, we might have something, some cloud in the middle or some tunnel in the, in the middle of those devices where we need to add some header overhead in order to make those tunnels work. So it's just another way of making those two endpoints adjust how much they will send or receive and then that gives more, more header space for these other protocols. That's where we see our encapsulated data can only be 1432. Once we add that TCP header, we see 20 bytes, and then we add our 20 byte IP header, that brings us to a total of 1472 bytes. That allows some room for some other headers uh, depending on the protocols that are in use on the links uh, between those two endpoints. Now, how does this actually work at the packet level? Let's go ahead and fire up Wireshark and take a look. 
Okay, so here we are in Wireshark, and this is just a simple three-way handshake between two end stations. And for this video, what we wanna do is take a look at the MSS value. So I'm gonna take a look at the SYN, and that's from our client to our server, going to port 80. If we come down to the TCP information, we can see down here in the header values that I have the options field. So in that options field, that's where I can specify the maximum segment size that I wanna receive, and that is 1460. So I'm informing the other side, uh, don't encapsulate any more data than 1460. Well, that flows along its way to the server, and then the server, if we take a look at the SYNAC, it responds, and it could be from the server itself or some network device along the way adjusted this MTU down to 1432. Now, if this, this option, if it's ever absent, if it's uh, in the handshake, if we see SYN, SYN, ACK, ACK, and in that SYN, we do not see the MSS, well, then those two endpoints will use the default value of 536 bytes. They won't send any segments larger than 536. That's the default value when in doubt, and we don't have this uh, MSS value exchanged. So hopefully this quick video helped you to understand the difference between MTU and MSS. Again, MTU, maximum transmission unit, that's a network thing. So how much can a network interface actually transmit? Um, how much data can be encapsulated within an Ethernet, uh, Ethernet frame or an IP packet? And the MSS, that is a TCP thing. That's something that's uh, exchanged in the TCP handshake, as we see here, and that indicates how much data can this station receive from the opposite side. So what's the largest amount of packet that you want to see coming in? Okay, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys on another video. Take care.